Tubby and Coo's Mid-City Bookshop. Before you get booked up, head over to 631 North Carrollton, right off Orleans, to Tubby and Coo's Mid-City Bookshop. Off the books, Tubby and Coo's is a nerd mecca for books, board games, and geeky t-shirts. So book it over to Tubby and Coo's Mid-City Bookshop at 631 North Carrollton. If you don't want to do it by the book, use their free Wi-Fi and check their stock at tubbyandcoos.com. Tubby and Coos Mid City Bookshop, where it's all geek to me. If you enjoy books that are sensual, macabre, unusual, and filled with magic, then delve into the worlds of award winning author and editor Kimberly B. Richardson. Her books, Tales from a Goth Librarian 1 and 2, The Decemberists, and Mavon Pomegranate, will surely satisfy your craving for the strange and unusual. Her books are available through Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, as well as Dark Oak Press at DarkOakPress.com. Have a cup of Earl Grey. Turn the pages and see what lurks within. The Legend of Zelda, Symphony of the Goddesses, comes to the Sanger Theater on April 1st. A four-movement symphony based on Nintendo's Legend of Zelda franchise with breathtaking video beautifully timed with a full orchestra and choir. For more information, go to ZeldaSymphony.com or buy your tickets now at Ticketmaster.com. The 39th Annual Science Fiction, Fantasy, and Gaming Convention, CoastCon, is happening this March 4th through 6th in the Gulf Coast Coliseum in Biloxi. CoastCon is the longest-running and largest convention in Mississippi. Enjoy three days of gaming, costumes, shopping, and guest panels with such amazing guests like Steve Bloom from Star Wars Rebels, Mary Elizabeth McGlynn from Naruto, and New York Times bestselling author Jacqueline Carey. For more information, go to CoastCon.org or check out their Facebook page. CoastCon, March 4th through 6th. Don't miss it. Resistance is futile. Boldly going where no show has gone before. This is the Week in Geek on Fox Sports 1280. Broadcasting from the TubbyandCoos.com studios, here's David and Brian. Good evening, New Orleans. This is the Week in Geek on Fox Sports 1280. Coming to you live from the TubbyandCoos.com studios. This is David D. Squared to Corbier with... Brian Held. Brian Held, how the hell are you? I am fantastic, sir. How are you? I am doing I am doing outstanding. Oh, that's I'm, great. I, shockingly enough, I'm in a good mood. Oh, that's, that's hey, that's awesome. And, and we're back in the studio. I know. It, it, is, it is very calming. Well, not really, not even remotely calming. <laughs> no. I, I, I am a tempest in a teapot. <laughs> of course you are. Yeah, so, uh, but uh, hey, Brian, I got mail. You got mail? Suck it. What? What are you <laughs> talking about? I got mail. Somebody sent the other guy a letter. Oh, God. Yeah, he's an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, as always, we strongly urge people to check out the Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash The Week in Geek, or check out our website at twigradio.com, and follow us on Twitter at Twig Radio. Now, Brian, how can people listen to this lovely show? Well, uh, of course, once we're done, we're, the recording's going to go up. It's going to go on Spreaker.com. You can also download Spreaker for your smartphone or tablet. We do have that YouTube channel out there that uh, gets posted to regularly, and... And iTunes. Yeah, iTunes yeah. for my dirty, dirty iPhone. I know. So, uh, yeah, uh, FoxSportsAM1280.com. You know, Brian, remind me to upload some damn audio to the website. <laughs> that would be nice. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, iHeart gave me admin responsibilities for <gasps> FoxSportsAM1280.com. Little do they know. I know. Yes. But, well, it, all, all my activity is monitored. <laughs> <laughs> Strictly monitored. <laughs> So, uh, Brian, so why don't you lay out the show a little bit more? All right. So, uh, of course, Scungie's on the line uh, waiting with bated breath to give us our great uh, review every every uh, week as he I, does. I, I, don't don't, don't e- e- embellish. Come on. What are you talking Okay. And, of course, <laughs> we have a guest in studio. We have Mr. Matt Finley, the president of Inexile Entertainment. How's it going, Matt? It's going excellent. Good to be here. Awesome. All right. So, uh, and uh, we'll get that at the second segment. Third segment, of course, Top Nerd News, and we'll close it out as we always do with This Week in Geek History. So, without much further ado, here's our boy Scungy and his pick of the week. I am not what you would call a handsome man. Scungy's Pick of the Week is brought to you by GameStop and ThinkGeek.com. Scungy's Pick of the Week. You might be an idiot savant. Woohoo! Scungy, what's shaking bacon? You having admin status is like giving a loaded gun to a baby. Yes, yes. I'm. I look. I'm all for uh, you know the, the Second Amendment. I have the right to bear arms or arm bears, whichever it is. <laughs> so, uh, Scungy, what you got for us today, man? 
Um, a ch- you know, I got a charming little game today called Unravel. It's uh, it was made uh, by EA and uh, this uh, little developer called Coldwood uh, Interactive. Um, it's an ag- it's a platform puzzler. The best way to describe you're playing this little yarn doll that's going through the Swedish countryside. Um, and you're you're just solving little you puzzles lady, in the you're environment. Lady, you're lady, oh. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Either that or the hills are alive. All right, so you're going to the Swedish countryside and what? Shooting Nazis? Yep. Yes, not you're not shooting Nazis. <laughs> it. It, no, this is not this is not a war game. I'm not picking a war game today. Oh. I'm actually picking like a, a sweet game is the best way to describe it. It's, I mean, it's charming. You, I mean, it it starts out with this old lady who's like. Who, you know, you know, puts stuff together with yarn, and the little character comes to life, and he's looking through her memories, and he's going to these places where she was as a young child to relive these memories. No, it sounds like something that that Dawn would really like. It really, it it, it uh, it's very, like I said, it's very artistic. Um, and I've played about a couple. I've played about three hours of it so far, and it's challenging as well because the puzzles really make you think outside the box. Because most of the puzzles are physics based, um, and using momentum, where throwing the yarn out and holding, like anchoring it down and holding onto a point and um, pulling a lever or something like that, and it makes you really think outside the box. They're not necessarily the easiest puzzles. So, kind of like uh, maybe Portal. Was physics not person? as outside the box thinking as Portal. <laughs> okay, but, all right. You know, but still, I mean, challenging. Okay. Um, and like I said, it's it's very charming. The graphics are, are beautiful. I mean, the, these wonderful landscapes and backgrounds. Um, the detail is amazing, and it's all for just twenty bucks too. Wow. What uh, what platforms, Gunji? It's on the Xbox One and the PS4. Okay. What about PC? Oh, man, if I'm correct, it's on the PC as Damn. well. Damn. I haven't gotten confirmation on the PC yet, but it might be it might be on the Dirty Dirty PC, as you say. Right. Hey, well, do we have to add Steam Box to the list now, too? Well, I mean, the Steam Box is the same, the, the Steam box is the same thing as any PC. It's okay. Just, it, it's just a PC that's made more as a console, not to be used for anything other than playing games and easily accessible to plug into your television. All right, fair enough. But if you have a high-end gaming PC and you spend the money on that, and if you really wanted to play it on your television, you could just go into Steam big, um, you know, big screen mode, right? Okay, and do it. All right, all right, Scudgy. So, what, what? Don't we have some other big games that are dropping in the next couple of weeks? Yeah, we have. Um, we have Far Cry comes out in about two weeks. Far Cry yeah. Primal. We got uh, Street Fighter Five comes out next week. Oh, okay. um, and there was another little indie game that came out as well called Firewatch uh, that's really good as well. What about, um, what is it, Overwatch? Is that Blizzard? Uh, Overwatch is Blizzard's new IP Yeah. Um, that is uh, coming out later on this year. It's a first-person shooter. It looks really good. It's the first new IP they've done in over 10 years. Yeah. Yeah, no, I saw some stuff pop up recently. I want to say uh, first quarter first second quarter this year it's probably coming out it's so. gonna be second quarter all right all right but it looks good so no it, it i mean Bl- i mean blizzard really doesn't make a bad games it just takes forever for them to make them yeah fair enough <laughs> so all right scunji well as always we thank you so much for your valuable valuable time what's wrong I, I... <laughs> you're too nice to me somebody slipped something in my drink i don't know so all right scunji well thanks always get off the show all right, Bye, that's, more like that's more like it. Bye. All right, Brian. So uh, you know what? Why don't we go ahead and take an early break? That way we can spend some more time with our with our guest. Yeah, most definitely. We'll do that. All Let's right. do that. All right, guys, stay tuned. You're listening to The Week in Geek on Fox Sports 1280. From the Legal Inc. Traffic Center, Fox Sports 1280, Time Saver Traffic. You're traveling from the CBD out to Metairie. Watch for an accident in the left lane, I-10 westbound near Broad. Delays backing up in that area. And also, very heavy traffic remains on your way out to New Orleans East. We had an earlier breakdown on the high rise. That was cleared eastbound, but delays are backed up on both I-10 and 610 East. 
And also watch for an accident in the right lane, I-10 East at Irish Bayou. I'm Lisa Bakke. Follow us on Twitter at Total Traffic NO. This report is brought to you by Wendy's. Head to Wendy's today and try the 99-cent everyday breakfast value menu. You'll find those fresh-made choices you love for less at participating Wendy's breakfast locations. This report is brought to you by Lead Safe America. Looks like a nice evening ahead, but we'll have the chance of fog rolling in late tonight and early tomorrow morning. Lows will be in the 50s. And for Friday, another beautiful day. Lots of sunshine after morning fog, and highs will be in the mid-70s. On Saturday, mostly sunny skies, breezy, but turning cooler with high temperatures in the mid-50s. From the Fox 8 Weather Center, I'm meteorologist David Bernard. Do you live in a historic home? Are you renovating? Your children could be at risk of lead poisoning. It takes just a microscopic amount of lead dust to poison a child. Learn more at leadsafeamerica.org. It's refund season, America, and this year, Block will get you your maximum refund plus a chance to win $1,000. 1,000 people win $1,000 every day at Block. That's a million dollars a day, but it's only here for a limited time. So what are you waiting for? Come into Block and get your money and maybe $1,000 too. It's refund season. No purchase necessary. For rules and alternate method of entry, visit hrblock.com slash grant. Open a legal U.S. residence, age 18 plus. Enter January 4th through February 15th. 32,000 total winners. Void where prohibited. Not everyone gets a refund. A Napa guy knows the good thing about an old truck is you can treat it like an old truck. Meaning, however you want. Because the paint job looks best covered in mud. Dance build character. And unpaved roads are unscientifically proven to be 70% more fun. And with over 400,000 parts and a little Napa know-how, you can keep that thing running longer, stronger. Because it's not old. It's broken in. That's Napa know-how. How far can you get on a gallon of paint? Go further with Bear Marquee at just forty ninety eight a gallon. It's paint and primer in one. With guaranteed one-coat coverage, exceptional durability, and hiding power, and now it's in over a 1,000 colors. This is truly the next step in paint. And with guaranteed one coat coverage, far fewer steps in painting. Get Bear Marquee Paint and Primer in One for just $40.98 a gallon. Only at the Home Depot. More saving, more doing. U.S. only. Tubby and Coos Mid City Bookshop at 631 North Carrollton. Books, board games, and geeky t shirts. Find them on the web at tubbyandcoos.com and follow them on Twitter at Tubby and Coos. Hashtag more than books. This March 4th through the 6th, CoastCon marks its 39th annual science fiction, fantasy, and gaming convention in Mississippi's Gulf Coast Coliseum in Biloxi. CoastCon is the longest-running and largest convention in Mississippi. Enjoy three days of gaming, costumes, shopping, and guest panels with such amazing guests like Steve Bloom from Star Wars Rebels, Mary Elizabeth McGlynn from Naruto, New York Times bestselling author Jacqueline Carey. For more information, go to CoastCon.org or check out their Facebook page. CoastCon, March 4th through 6th. Don't miss it. Legend of Zelda, Symphony of the Goddesses, comes to the Sanger Theater on April 1st. A four-movement symphony based on Nintendo's Legend of Zelda franchise, with breathtaking video beautifully timed with a full orchestra and choir. For more information, go to zeldasymphony.com or buy your tickets now at ticketmaster.com. Leave the smoke behind and come chase the clouds at the Vaping Tiger in Metairie. The Vaping Tiger has everything to suit your vaping needs, from starter kits to advanced devices. We specialize in handcrafted, artisan-blended e-juices designed to tickle the most fickle taste buds. Come see us at 2812 Athenia Parkway, one block off Vets behind the Lazy Boy Gallery. That's the Vaping Tiger, 2812 Athenia Parkway, and at VapingTiger.com. Come out of the smoke and join us in the clouds. Now back to The Week in Geek on Fox Sports 1280 with local celebrity Brian and that other guy. uh, What's his name again? David, I think. I don't know. David? Yeah, it's David. Okay. Welcome back, New Orleans. You're listening to The Week in Geek on Fox Sports 1280. This is Brian with... The guy who's going to murder the voice guy. <laughs> I, I don't want to give my names because I don't want to incriminate myself. Uh, yeah, I love the voice guy. He's great. Shut your dirty celebrity mouth. <laughs> don't know where that thing's been. So, hey, um, we have Mr. Matt Finley, president of NXL Entertainment, in the studio with us. How are you, sir? 
I'm doing fantastic, man. It's really good to be here. Awesome. Well, we're so excited to have you. So, uh, man, hey, you know, big news for the city, right? Exile Entertainment getting it an office extension here in New Orleans. Man, how, how'd that happen? Yeah, yeah. We're, we're pretty excited about it. You know, we've been... Uh, We've been expanding and growing and taking on some extra titles, and uh, you know, I first had the idea of wanting to escape Southern California, right? And started looking into what our options might be, and uh, you know, started talking to the people at the state of Louisiana, and they made us an offer we we couldn't refuse. So. Right, right. So one of the few things Bobby Jindal did right with the <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. I think that when they when they put out the press release that uh, Bobby Jindal and Brian Fargo announced in Exile's new game studio, we thought that was pretty funny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So no, that that's great, man. And and I mean, there is been a growth. I've heard from from numerous corners of, of the city about a, a, a little uh, Silicon Valley South. Essentially, is kind of popping up here. A lot of tech stuff rolling in. Yeah, the Silicon Bayou. It's, yeah, uh, it's starting to gain some momentum. You know, the, we're not the first ones to come, but uh, you know, we we came and we took it very very seriously. And oh, yeah. uh, uh, the main thing that made it happen, I think, was I was able to talk four or five of the guys back in our headquarters in Newport Beach in California into making the move out here with me. And once I kind of had some support and I knew I wasn't going to be coming out here all by myself, right? we just pulled the trigger and came out here and opened up the studio and uh, started ramping up and hiring people. And nice. In the short time we've been here, I've been here since the middle of November, we've already made about a dozen hires, most of them local. Yeah. And uh, one of the reasons why we really like the idea of getting a studio in New Orleans is not only for the talent in New Orleans, but it does give us access to East Coast talent that we wouldn't be able to get to go all the way to California. Right, right. All right, now, <clears throat> you know, you, you've you been in the industry with over 20 years at this point, right? Yeah, uh, it's the I, only job I've ever had. Uh, but how awesome is that, right? <laughs> I mean, that, you know, it sounds like a dream come true, right, for, for most. I mean, how, how'd you start? How'd you get in? Oh, uh, it was a complete accident. Um, I, I had met Brian Fargo, who is industry legend and the founder of Interplay Productions, one of the biggest publishers back in the 90s. I had met him about a year before. I ended up going to work for him uh, just through friend of a friend, and word got passed to me that they were looking for programmers because they were trying to do some 8-bit Nintendo games, and I just went and met with them. I was just looking for a summer job to try to make some beer money, right? right. <laughs> and uh, just started working there and really kind of fell in love with it. And I was studying computer science at the University of California, Irvine, and was planning on to go on to a real computer job, and that was my dad's expectation as well. Uh, I'm paying the bills here. Yeah, exactly. You're going to mow the lawn on the weekends, too. <laughs> I ended up graduating, and Brian brought me into his office, and he said, we want you to come on full time. We think this could be a wow. really good career for wow. you. Wow. And I tried not to just laugh in his face because that was the silliest thing I'd ever heard in 1989, that there would be a career in the video game business. Yeah. Uh, but I just sort of was too lazy to go out and get a real job, so I, <laughs> I stayed on, and uh, man, 12 years later, I was still working for him at Interplay, Right. and then we both left Interplay around the same time in 2002 and started up in exile, and all of a sudden, another 12 or 13 years have gone by, Right. Right. and now I'm here in New Orleans doing the, the studio out here. Not really sure what how I managed to be working in games for the last 29 years. No, but that's great. So now you started as a programmer. Now yeah. you're president, right? I mean, do you still get your hands dirty, or is it mostly administrative now for you? You know, that, that was one of the reasons why we started in exile, was so we could get kind of back into the, the nitty-gritty of making games. Over the course of the first 10 years of my career, I had a chance to kind of do every type of job there was, starting off as just a 6502 programmer, and then we started doing 16 six 16-bit uh, stuff with uh, the Super Nintendo, and then started designing the games I was working on, and then sort of started producing the games, and then started producing outside developed titles, uh, and then all of a sudden I was running one of the divisions in the company full of things, and by the time I was done at Interplay, I was living in London, England, and I was the general manager of all of our European operations, Wow! which meant all the sales, marketing, distribution, and development going on there. And I sort of woke up one day and realized that I was not really in the game business anymore. We were just, like, <laughs> doing distribution management. Right. And Brian kind of felt the same way. And we wanted to start in exile and get a small studio and just really get back to the hands-on game development of writing the games and designing the games and producing the games. And so we just wanted to kind of keep it 
small and keep yeah. the keep the middle management to a minimum so that we were all really super hands on with the development. No, but that's great. So I mean, you know, it, now it sounds like your job is sort of spread out, right? A little bit of management, a little bit of programming, but you still get that time in with stuff you love, right? Yeah, you know, and the the things I've been able to focus on most in the last 3 or 4 years is sort of the the storytelling element of it and really focusing on the writing and the stories that we're trying to tell and the places and the people and the locations and getting into the level design stuff and leaving the the more technical system stuff to some of the younger kids that are more plugged into it than I am anymore. Right, and right. just trying to tell the stories that I want to tell. Do y'all kind of like storyboard this stuff out? Where like like how, What's a normal day at... at, at, at- <laughs> In exile, you know, it's 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 not that different than than how novels are created or how film is created. You know, it, it starts with a super high level idea that's a couple sentences, right? And then we we write two and three page treatments to kind of express the ideas, and then we do something kind of weird from that point is that we kind of go back and we worry about the the thousand year history of how we got to this point and we we write all of this detailed information that no one who ever plays the final product will ever see (laughs) but it sort of serves as the foundation with which the story that we're telling lives on top of and it just gives it a I don't know, a reality and a, an anchor in, in something, even in a fantasy game. Like well, that. I mean, that sounds like the, the basic tenets of world building. It's what yeah. Tolkien gave us, right? You know, yeah. so, no, that's definitely awesome. And, of course, you say that the, the players won't see that, but you can always release that as background <laughs> and have another product to sell with, with the game, right? And, yeah. and I, I, I'll offer to proofread that before you, <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, ship it out to anybody. You know, you know just, we, just say it all for my services. We've done a little bit of that. Even in, in Wasteland 2, we kind of wrote the 150-year history that took place between the old 1988 Wasteland 1 game and the time that our game was set. And we fell in love with some of that material. And so we did, like... Um, write little miniature books that the player could find in the world. And if they wanted to sit down and wow. read the pages of backstory stuff, it was there, there for them. And if you don't care about that stuff, then you just gloss right over it. Wow. No, but I mean, you know, you often wonder about that. I mean, uh, I think about Skyrim, right? And there's so many books in the game and all the, the background stuff. So that's where that comes from, right? Yeah. And you, I don't think people realize this the scale of the writing for these things compared to a film or for, for a book. For, for Wasteland 2, there was over a half million words. Wow. I mean, that's, that's like bigger than War and Peace. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Most definitely. So, so what are some titles, you know, some small little titles that you might have worked on that we might have heard of? You know, that, that's what's great about our industry is it's so big that I can find a way to have employment for 30 years working on game after game after game and ship hundreds of them, and you never will have heard of any of them. What? <laughs> well, that's not true because you, you were on, uh, well, of course, Baldur's Gate, uh, uh, the two, your Bard's Tale, Icewind Dale. Right, I, you know, some. I mean, some of the, those are big games, man. Yeah, unfortunately, I had very little to do with them. <laughs> just, 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 uh, well, <laughs> we take, were a take, big company back then. Yeah, nah, take credit for it, man. Yeah, no, I wrote them all. It was all me. <laughs> yeah, I love it. You heard it here. <laughs> no, that's cool. So right now, there's there's three big ones on the plate. Wasteland Two. Um, just relatively recently came out. Yeah, right? I guess the, the first release was um, over a year ago, and then this December we released sort of the director's cut, sort of a secondary okay. release. And that year was amazing. There's nothing better in our industry than being able to start with a done game and then work on it for another year. Wow. <laughs> right, that right. Was, that was, that's something that normally only Blizzard gets to do. Right. So for us as a small Man, indie, to be, to, yeah. <laughs> to be able to uh, have that opportunity was, was pretty incredible. We were really able to kind of just really fully craft it and get all of our our dreams into it in that extra year. Right. And then uh, what's... Um, I, the, 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 yeah, the second game that we uh, we funded through Kickstarter was Torment Tides of Numenera. And that's a that's a spiritual successor to an old game in the late 90s called uh, Planescape Torment. Right. Did you ever play Planescape Torment? I don't think so. It's a PC it was, game. It was a PC game. I, no, I, I started on PC. Don't, don't, I don't want to talk about the dirty PC, Brian. <laughs> that's all we're talking about right now. It had a lot of words in it. Oh, uh, well, okay. <laughs> I, I, I don't. I don't. If it's got pictures, I, I'm in all about it. All about pictures. So, and that that of course is uh, just released on beta, right? Right. So we released the beta to the backers uh, in I think mid January, and then a few weeks later, we released it on Steam Early Access. Um, which the Early Access thing is, is like a little bit controversial, but we look at it from this point of view. We are just inundated with requests of people just begging us 
to get access to these games before they're done. They yeah. want to participate. Right. And Steam Early Access allows us to do that. We put it out there, and if you really are into that thing, then you can lay down your 45 bucks and join in the process. And that's it's kind of like alpha at that point, maybe? Yeah, or? it's a little... It's it's about half of the game um, really at a pretty solid beta phase. I mean, it's okay. it's, it's pretty playable. You'll, you'll find some bugs. I mean, that's the reason why we do it. Yeah, right. Yeah. Try to find the things that are wrong with it, you know? Do you get any... Get, do you get your name in the credits? Uh, you know, a lot of our Kickstarter backers were able to buy their way into the credits. Nice. <laughs> no, that's cool. And then, uh, of course... Uh, Barnstown 4. Yeah, right? so that's the latest one that we crowdfunded, and that's really the one that I've come here to New Orleans to set up the studio to to do that title from from here. Wow, see, that that just that gives, gives me all warm and fuzzy yeah. inside, man. I like that. I like to hear that. Yeah, no, that's great. So, uh, you know, a new chapter in, in Barnstown, like, what you know, what are some of the differences from the previous offerings? What, you know? Well, you know, the, the interesting thing is... <clears throat> Excuse me. You have to go. I had to go back and really kind of look at the original material and really find out where this game came from. And those games are so old that <laughs> yes, yes, they are. There's, there's we have this memory of them and this nostalgic feeling about them, uh, but the reality of what they really were doesn't really match that. So the best I can do is is tap into my own nostalgic feelings about it and okay. make sure that this new game with modern technology and Unreal Engine four and all the amazing graphics that comes with that, that it it lives up to from a story point of view and from a gameplay point of view to the way you remembered those games being even more than being true to how they really were. Right, right. Okay. Well, and so, um, all right. Actually, I, I do have a couple more questions. So we're going to keep you over to break. And uh, when we get back, uh, more with Matt Finley, president of NXL Entertainment. Stay tuned, guys. Traffic Center, Fox Sports 1280, Time Saver Traffic. Traveling toward the high rise, watch for heavy traffic remaining near Paris Avenue on I 610 eastbound after an earlier breakdown. We also have a stalled 18 wheeler in the right lane, I 10 east at Irish Bayou, and also some thick traffic in Slidell. Watch for construction work causing a backup on I 59 south heading toward I 12. And we also have heavy traffic near DeGaulle coming to the east bank of the Crescent City Connection and very slow going on I-310 southbound heading toward Luling. I'm Lisa Bakke. Follow us on Twitter at Total Traffic NO. This report is brought to you by Unbound. A more peaceful, healthy world happens one person at a time. Around the globe, there are children who dream of helping their families, who hope for the future, and who have a name. Know the person you're helping directly at Unbound.org. That's Unbound.org. You love music. I love music. But not one genre. A thousand. You can't be defined by one artist. No. Nope. Well, with iHeartRadio's My Favorites Radio, you now have a station that collects all your favorite music in one place. Anything you thumb up is added. So if you like rock and roll, followed by yodeling. <laughs> do you, big man? It's all free. Thank God. Download our iHeartRadio app today or listen online at iHeartRadio.com. It's refund season, America. And this year, when you come into Block to get your refund, you'll also get a chance to win $1,000. 1,000 people win $1,000 every day at Block. That's an extra grand in your hand. So what are you waiting for? Don't you want an extra 1000 Walk in to win. It's refund season. No purchase necessary. For rules and alternate method of entry, visit hrblock.com slash grant. Open a legal U.S. residence, age 18 plus. Enter January 4th through February 15th. 32,000 total winners. Void where prohibited. Not everyone gets a refund. Any Napa guy knows, and science proves, the best minivan is the one you've already got. Part kid transporter, part drywall mover. Who cares if the faux wood grain is a little faded? That was a platinum package option in 1987. With over 400,000 parts and a little Napa know-how, you can keep anything on the road. Because it's not old, it's vintage. That's Napa know-how. At iHeartMedia, we have harnessed the power of sound in a way that can help you expand your reach to a new group of target customers and grow your business through customized and effective advertising. Call 844-BY-RADIO or go to iHeartMedia.com. Tubby and Coos Mid-City Bookshop. 
Before you get booked up, head over to 631 North Carrollton, right off Orleans, to Tubby and Coos Mid-City Bookshop. Off the books, Tubby and Coos is a nerd mecca for books, board games, and geeky t-shirts. So book it over to Tubby and Coos Mid-City Bookshop at 631 North Carrollton. If you don't want to do it by the book, use their free Wi-Fi and check their stock at tubbyandcoos.com. Tubby and Coos Mid-City Bookshop, where it's all geek to me. If you enjoy books that are sensual, macabre, unusual, and filled with magic, then delve into the worlds of award-winning author and editor Kimberly B. Richardson. Her books, Tales from a Goth Librarian 1 and 2, The Decemberists, and Mavon Pomegranate, will surely satisfy your craving for the strange and unusual. Her books are available through Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, as well as Dark Oak Press at DarkOakPress.com. Have a cup of Earl Grey, turn the pages, and see what lurks within. Legend of Zelda Symphony of the Goddesses comes to the Sanger Theater on April 1st. A four movement symphony based on Nintendo's Legend of Zelda franchise with breathtaking video beautifully timed with a full orchestra and choir. For more information, go to zeldasymphony.com or buy your tickets now at ticketmaster.com. The 39th Annual Science Fiction, Fantasy, and Gaming Convention, CoastCon, is happening this March 4th through 6th in the Gulf Coast Coliseum in Biloxi. CoastCon is the longest-running and largest convention in Mississippi. Enjoy three days of gaming, costumes, shopping, and guest panels with such amazing guests like Steve Bloom from Star Wars Rebels, Mary Elizabeth McGlynn from Naruto, and New York Times bestselling author Jacqueline Carey. For more information, go to CoastCon.org or check out their Facebook page. CoastCon, March 4th through 6th. Don't miss it. My name is Optimus Prime, and you are listening to The Week in Geek. Autobots, transform, and roll out. Welcome back, New Orleans. You're listening to The Week in Geek on Fox Sports 1280. This is Brian with... Anderson Cooper. (laughs) I know it. See... Fox is on in the room, sorry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, we're still uh, here with uh, Mr. Matt Finley, president of NXL Entertainment. And uh, so I, w- I had a couple more questions for you, right? Um, the the first being um, Kickstarter, right? Yeah. I mean, that, that seems like such an unusual method by which to to fund a game right games yeah. are you know produced by large corporations that that are have you know regularly i don't know kind of get their games out and produced uh you know revenue it's a, like h- how is that working for y'all yeah i mean kickstarter's really been a game changer and and wasteland 2 the first title that we funded through kickstarter is the perfect example so this is a title that we wanted to get made for decades okay and i personally flew around the country to every publisher on the planet and did our pitch and we tried to get it made and we just couldn't get anyone to get interested in it but every time we would go anywhere the fans were always asking for it so we felt like there was this movement of people wanting it and then fallout 3 came out and it was huge and we thought okay post-apocalyptic is back now's Mm -hmm. our chance so we did a second round right trying to pitch it and the publishers just wouldn't pull the trigger on it so when Kickstarter came around, we thought, well, it seems like there's a fan base there. Yeah. And, and really, all we're really talking about is we need sixty or 70,000 of them to, to jump in with us. And then we think there could be that many. Let's just take a shot at it. This is the last chance that this title ever has to get made. And so that's just kind of way we framed it to them. Last opportunity. You guys jump in. This is going to be a reality. If you guys say you're not interested, then there will never be a Wasteland title. So let us know. And, you know, we did a million dollars that first day, and we realized, oh, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they no. like us. They really <laughs> like us. No, but, I mean, I, I, I think it's so fantastic that, that Kickstarter exists, that these opportunities exist, right, that we don't have this, you know, uh, nebulous entity out there like Hollywood, right, just yeah. giving us what they think we want, right? And, and we have a voice in it. I think it's great. Yeah, it's, it's changed things on a couple levels. Not only are we able to raise enough money to get the thing made, but then we're not answering to a publisher while we're making it. So the entire time, we are making 100% of the exact game that we want to make. Nice. We get stuck a lot of times of going out and trying to pitch to publishers the game that we think they'll pay for, not the game that we believe in. Right. When you go to Kickstarter, this is the game that we really believe in, and the fans see that, and they support us. That's fantastic. Yeah, it's, it's changed everything. All right, so the, the, the big question, final question is, <clears throat> you know, you came here, 
you're in New Orleans now, NXL Entertainment, and you have some job opportunities. So listeners out there, pay attention. What, what's on the table? Yeah, I mean, we are we are definitely in a hiring mode. We've got a bunch of open positions. Um, you know, we're looking for 3D animators, 3D artists, both character artists and environment artists, uh, visual effects artists, engineers, anyone that's got any sort of background using the Unreal Engine, Unreal Engine 4 is best, even if Unreal Engine 3. And we've, we've made hires of people that have had normal programming jobs for the last 10 years, but on their nights and weekends for the last five years, they've been making games in Unreal 4. Okay. Those are the guys we're looking for. Yeah. The guys that want are looking to try to break free and, and live the dream and make the games. No, I that's, believe I can fly. Yeah. <laughs> that's inspirational, isn't no, it? No, it is. <clears throat> I'm no. going to screw radio. I quit. <laughs> You have to have some talent, though. Ah, I didn't mention that part. Damn it, no. he, he'll sweep your floors. I will. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, coffee? I really need that right you need now. need coffee? I'm your guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Matt, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. And, and of course, you're going to stick around. You're going to hang out with us? Yeah, yeah absolutely. We're, we're, I'm here. i got nowhere to go. Okay, cool. Yeah, we're going to do some uh, top nerd news now. So now, now you, can, you can give us your, your, your thoughts on the headlines. And now your top nerd news stories from around the world. Brought to you by Heroes Corner Comics. Find them on the World Wide Web at HeroesCornerComics.com. And now your top nerd news stories. So, so where, do you, where do you want to start? I, I don't know. There's, there's so much news. <laughs> there is. There is a lot of news. You know, but, we, uh, we were like we went through like a a, a, a wasteland of, of crap. Like <laughs> last week, there was like nothing yeah, to talk about. It was almost, you know, a dearth of of uh, Ooh, information. Good word. Yeah. So uh, I uh, I don't know. Wait, let's see. S- uh, Sunday, 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 Sunday. In your home, <laughs> you might or might not get laid. We don't know. It's Valentine's Day. Yeah. So uh, does your dear and lovely, lovely wife love you, or, or, or y'all, uh, you know, in a She fact? hates Valentine's Day. Oh, you're so lucky. I know. Yeah. I, don't know I don't know. I, I, any woman that says, you know, oh, honey, you don't have to get any, anything for me, it's just in, the, in the immortal words of Admiral Akbar. <laughs> it's a trap. <laughs> it's a trap. No, no, no. It's just another day for us. But, but, but you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of romance in the air, right? And there's a good opportunity <laughs> to go to go and see. A great romantic comedy that's coming out this weekend. Uh, drum roll. <laughs> Deadpool. <wait>. Deadpool. <laughs> For all the lovers out there. Oh, yeah. No, I'm stupid excited. Well, I, you know, on, on our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash The Week in Geek, uh, you, you've, been, you've been giving them like daily Rotten Tomato scores. Well, yeah, you know, I mentioned it a couple times. But uh, like I mean, three times. It, well, it did, it did hit 100%. I mean, how insane is that? Even if it was brief. Uh, it last time I checked, it was around eighty one. Yeah, right? yeah, I think I think that's where it's, it, it's sticking right now. But I mean, tonight it technically opens. You know, I mean, it's already been greenlit as of what two or three days ago before it technically hit the uh, the, the the mass market. So, yeah. um, uh, what are they? What? I don't know. I haven't seen it. You know, <laughs> so I mean, I don't know. I guess I'm going to go tonight. You, you're going to? You, I'm, I got to wait till tomorrow. I got I got work tomorrow. So, but um, did you see Ryan Reynolds on on Jimmy Fallon? I did not tell him. Oh tell me. my, he was fantastic. So he, there was a fan out there, and and I mean, like Uber fan. This girl is just too into Deadpool. <laughs> she went and got her wisdom teeth pulled, right? Oh, and on the ride home, she's all like loopy, drugged up, and and in her drug addled mind, thinks that she has missed Deadpool. Like like she can't see oh, it. Oh god, and is <laughs> just bawling and crying or whatever. And and her mom is filming the whole thing. And like as a as a lark, just kind of posted to the net. It starts getting hits. Wow. Ryan Reynolds sees it, <laughs> contacts her, and is like, "Hey, you know, you don't have to miss Deadpool. I'll send you some tickets and fly to New York for the premiere. How about that?" Yeah, I mean, it's wow. like wow, yeah. And uh, sure enough, you know, uh, uh, I saw the pictures of her with Ryan Reynolds and everything, and and she is just like, she's like, I can't believe this happened. Man, I, I wish somebody would slip me a roofie <laughs> and then you know, take my picture and video, send it to Ryan Reynolds. Oh, we'll put oh. that on the to do list. <laughs> All right, yeah, let's keep that one going. All right, so the Super Bowl, Brian. I know you how much you love sports ball. Um, no. Well, I need- no, We're but, on Fox Sports. Yeah, I know. Just, 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 we just put the fantasy, the company fantasy line. in fantasy football. Yes, that, we put the fantasy <laughs> in fantasy football. <laughs> but, speaking, of, speaking of which, wait, <laughs> Matt and I were, real quick, Matt and I were talking earlier, and tell them about the trophy. Yeah, I, I won the trophy in my fantasy football league. You, well, good you on you. You can be a geek and still be into fantasy and sports. I, and I asked you. him if his team was elves or orcs, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. 
I so. <laughs> See, this is what I got to deal with, dude. This is what yeah, I got to deal I, with, I man. I feel for you. All so what about your silly Super Bowl? All right. Well, for, for all the people who were paying attention to the Super Bowl, there was lots of uh, uh, movie drops. Yeah. You know, all the, yeah. the, the new uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh-huh. Right? Yeah. And Captain America. Right. Uh, so, I mean, did you see him or did you just... just Follow it on the intranets. <clears throat> I I watch it streaming on the internet. Dave. You watch the Super Bowl streaming? No, oh, no. The, the just the commercials, the trailers. That's right. all I need to see. So, so what what did, right. what did you think about the new the new Captain America? Well, who's your, who's your, what's your side, Dave? I don't know. I'm probably Captain America. Really? I yeah. I would think that you'd be Snarky Stark. No, no. Really? Because my man, and, you know, because I have to take whatever the opposite is of you. Yeah. Right? So suck it. You go be Iron Man. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, hey, look, I'm an Uber geek. That's cool, right? Lots of technology. You know, I can I can deal with that. All right, all right. I think I'm so, with you on the Iron Man. Oh, hey, there we go. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I I I like the team too, man. They got he's got Ant Man too. So he, you know, I, 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 I really dig Ant Man. Okay, so. there's a lot of snark there. Yeah. yeah okay. So. All right. Fair enough. All right, now, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. This is one I really want to talk about. Okay. This is the freaking movie they should have done first instead of that crap fest they first tried to sell us. I mean, that first movie was a joke. Megan Fox bo- boobs all over the place. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. I, I wanted some turtles, and, right. and I got some like weird uh, anthropomorphic looking, you know, green globs. I don't know, man. I, I hated the first movie. Okay. Fell asleep in it twice. Really? Twice. I went to the theater with my son. Fell asleep. Got it at home because 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 the kid wanted it. Right. Fell asleep watching it at home because it was a piece of crap. Did, this, this did your kid one, like it? What did DJ like it? Yeah, he's a kid. What the hell does he know? <laughs> he's, he's ten. He's ten. He doesn't know anything. But no, th- th- this new one. I mean, they got Krang in it. And, and right, dude, right. And did you see it? It's like the old, like, like pinhead looking Krang. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, ding, ding, ding. <laughs> he's like, blah, blah, blah. dude, it right. looks awesome. He got Bebop and Rocksteady. Bebop, right. I, yeah. Dude, I, I'm, I'm psyched about this one. No, I, I think it. I think it might be good. I actually, I have not seen the first one. I was just kind of skip it. Yeah, you can skip it. it yeah. I'm pretty damn sure there's no plot information that you need to know because they they just screwed up the whole Splinter and and Shredder thing. I mean, they just crapped the bed on that. All one. right, because I, I still have my whole original run of Turtles comics. So, oh well, you well, know, well, I, well, good on you. <laughs> I I have the all four the uh, the Turtles back in time. Oh really? Teenage Mutant Ninja <laughs> Turtles, Turtle Power. Wow. All yeah, right, that's so, pretty, um, pretty rough. All right, but what, what was the other one that dropped? Uh, oh, Independence Day and uh, something else. I can't remember. All right, so what are your thoughts on the new Star Trek? On the new from the Bra- uh, Brian Fuller, Fuller. Brian Fuller. Have you seen Hannibal? I've never seen it. No, no. Matt, um, have you seen it? No. no. Who the hell is the guy? I I I don't know, but apparently I mean, why is everybody so excited? Woo! Apparently, he's, hey, you know what? What's in, a, what's his sci-fi crap? In two weeks, we're gonna have Randolph Allen, captain of the USS New Orleans. <laughs> And uh, he, we can, we can grill him about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll literally grill. Him. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds delicious. Yeah. yeah. Give us the Earth Defense codes now. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, uh, you know, the 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 article that I saw uh, about it was fairly vague, right? It's like, well, you know, we got him signed on, and and he's really cool, and and you know, sky's the limit, right? Uh, and uh, and we hear that he might even like Star Trek. <laughs> Right. right. Well, we can't, can't promise right. you anything. So, uh, all right, what else do we have to, to wrap this up before we go to a break? On um, the iPhone Error 53. I got to mention. What the hell is that? Okay, so look, it, our argument, Android, iPhone aside, all right, right. basically, um, Apple has in their newest, latest version or whatever, if you've gone and, and got a third party fix on your iPhone, chances are your phone will get bricked. What? Because that third-party independent retailer wasn't able to validate the the repair, the warranty repair on your device. So what sucks is like some journalists around third world countries with no access to like you know the, the Apple I store, the iStore, whatever, <laughs> right? And they're getting the stuff repaired because they're out in the field, and then it works great, no problem. They get back to the states, bang, it gets bricked. Wow. So. There, there's, you know. Well, that, just don't go to a third world country. I mean, I'll fix that problem right there. Say, all right, send me a dollar for that idea. Right, go Android. I don't like you anymore, man. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, now you're on Team Brian. You are officially the enemy. All right. So, uh, and in closing, uh, uh, board games make you smarter, Brian. They do. And and that was cool because that was um, from Geek and Sundry, which yes. is Felicia Day's channel. It's a lot of cool And your stuff. man crush, Will Wheaton. Will Wheaton on Tabletop, right? Watch Tabletop if you want to learn how to play some cool board games and, and just kind of find out about them before maybe you buy it, right? That's... Or go to Tubby and Coos. You can. City Bookshop. Every Sunday, board gaming night. 
Uh, so definitely check that out. She's got a lot of good stuff available, and uh, we have a lot of fun out there. So are you ready to roll? I am. All right, guys. So stay tuned. You're listening to The Week in Geek on Fox Sports 1280. An oil change protects your car's engine to help keep it running stronger for longer. That's why AutoZone has the right oil, filters, and all the helpful advice you need. So get those hands dirty and keep your engine running like it's fresh off the lot. You can pick up some of that new car smell, too. With our help, you can always fix your car with confidence. Hoods up, America. Turn some of your tax refund into a lot more miles with five quarts of Valvoline conventional motor oil and a Bosch oil filter for just $22.99. See store for restrictions and details. Get in the zone, AutoZone. This is a Crime Stoppers Most Wanted Alert. Crime Stoppers is asking for your help in the October 30th, 2012 murder of Christopher Campbell. Christopher was found in his 2004 Mustang that was burned on the shoulder of Louisiana 46 in Eastern St. Bernard Parish. Anyone with information on Christopher Campbell's murder is urged to call Crime Stoppers at 822-1111 or download our Tip Submit smartphone app. You can remain anonymous and earn a $6,000 cash reward. Tubby and Coos Mid-City Bookshop. Before you get booked up, head over to 631 North Carrollton, right off Orleans, to Tubby and Coos Mid-City Bookshop. Off the books, Tubby and Coos is a nerd mecca for books, board games, and geeky t-shirts. So book it over to Tubby and Coos Mid-City Bookshop at 631 North Carrollton. If you don't want to do it by the book, use their free Wi-Fi and check their stock at tubbyandcoos.com. Tubby and Coos Mid-City Bookshop, where it's all geek to me. This March 4th through the 6th, CoastCon marks its 39th annual science fiction, fantasy, and gaming convention in Mississippi's Gulf Coast Coliseum in Biloxi. CoastCon is the longest-running and largest convention in Mississippi. Enjoy three days of gaming, costumes, shopping, and guest panels with such amazing guests like Steve Bloom from Star Wars Rebels, Mary Elizabeth McGlynn from Naruto, New York Times bestselling author Jacqueline Carey. For more information, go to CoastCon.org or check out their Facebook page. CoastCon, March 4th through 6th. Don't miss it. Leave the smoke behind and come chase the clouds at the Vaping Tiger in Metairie. The Vaping Tiger has everything to suit your vaping needs, from starter kits to advanced devices. We specialize in handcrafted, artisan-blended e-juices designed to tickle the most fickle taste buds. Come see us at 2812 Athenia Parkway, one block off Vets behind the Lazy Boy Gallery. That's the Vaping Tiger, 2812 Athenia Parkway, and at VapingTiger.com. Come out of the smoke and join us in the clouds. If you enjoy books that are sensual, macabre, unusual, and filled with magic, then delve into the worlds of award-winning author and editor Kimberly B. Richardson. Her books, Tales from a Goth Librarian 1 and 2, The Decemberists, and Mavon Pomegranate will surely satisfy your craving for the strange and unusual. Her books are available through Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, as well as Dark Oak Press at DarkOakPress.com. Have a cup of Earl Grey, turn the pages, and see what lurks within. The Legend of Zelda Symphony of the Goddesses comes to the Sanger Theater on April 1st. A four movement symphony based on Nintendo's Legend of Zelda franchise with breathtaking video beautifully timed with a full orchestra and choir. For more information, go to zeldasymphony.com or buy your tickets now at ticketmaster.com. Final round. This is the Weekend Geek. Excellent. On Fox Sports 1280. Outstanding. Broadcasting from the tubbyandcoos.com studios. Fight. Here's David and Brian. Finish him. Welcome back, New Orleans. You're listening to the Weekend Geek on Fox Sports 1280. This is Brian Held with Lu Kang. <laughs> Oh, that's a great rejoinder. All right. Hey, we're uh, we're running to the finish line. we got a bunch of stuff to, yes, to get. Yes, so, Community news. Community news real quick. Uh, this weekend is Potty Gras 2016 Star Paws, and it's uh, in Plaquemines Parish. It's going to be a bell chase, uh, and it, basically it's going to be a, another parade, right, because we didn't get enough parades. Yeah, past right. We need more. But this is for your dogs, right? So bring your dogs out in costume. There's going to be some costume contest. Uh, Angela Hill is going to be out there as the celebrity <laughs> guest judge. Yeah. And um, it's going to be a lot of fun. I will be out there as one of the judges, too. Get out. Yeah, so... so. Not, now, now you're not just taunting humans, you're taunting the animal kingdom. Hey, now... So, look. who made your who made your costume there, doggy? 
Ruff and, and Chuck Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good All right. Lord. Hey, so um, you gave me this note. and <laughs> Yeah, so we have a new sponsor, Brian. We do. Um, and, of course, uh, you've been hearing the commercials for CoastCon. Dun, 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 dun. Yes, Coast Con 39. 39 30, glorious yeah. years. I know, man. It's it, I remember going to Coast Con when I was like, I don't know, 16, 17. I got, I, the first time I ever got drunk was at Coast Con. Really? I, I kid you not, man. I, it was at the at the Gulf Coast Arena, and and like I was fifteen, <laughs> and and I, I was trying to I was trying to sleep in the twenty four hour gaming room. They weren't playing that game, so I was looking for something to drink because I was bored and, and I was and I was broke, and uh, I thought somebody had Gatorade. I was woefully uninformed that it was not Gatorade. It yeah. was actually Reanimator fluid, and well, now I'm here. So, so uh, hey. Coast Con. Coast Con. March 4th, so 5th, March 6th. 6th. Yeah, 4th, 5th, 6th, yeah, at the uh, Gulf Coast Coliseum in Biloxi. And CoastCon.org. Yeah, it's a great event, um, and they're, they've got some great guests. Steve Bloom is there. We, we met him uh, before. He was a great interview. And uh, so uh, definitely check it out. Put it on your list of things to do. It's always a lot of fun. There's the beach, right? Matt likes the beach, right? So, a little bit. Little yeah. Bit, yeah. So, All right, so Brian, yes. I, I don't care about you anymore. I got mail. Uh-oh. I got mail. So you know what? Uh, it, it's somebody sent the uh, to the station the other guy. So uh, I'm just assuming it was me. I hope so. So uh, without much further ado, dear other guy. Dear other guy, Valentine's Day is coming up, and I wanted to get my geeky gamer girlfriend something really special. She's into science fiction and fantasy, comic books, and she plays lots of video games and board games. So I figured I'd give her the best of both worlds with a geeky-themed Monopoly board game. But there's so many versions to choose from. Do I get the Doctor Who, Star Wars, Marvel or DC, Zelda, Street Fighter? Please help! Or should I just get her an extra controller for her Xbox so we can play games together? Signed, Bewildered Boyfriend. Well, Bewildered Boyfriend, if your girlfriend really is a geek and a gamer, and you're seriously contemplating getting her a geek-themed Monopoly game, then you're an idiot! That's like saying my girlfriend is a chef! Should I get her a gift card for McDonald's or Burger King? Or, or, or wait, my girlfriend is a sommelier! Which one in a box should I get her? You're an idiot! And, and as to an extra controller, if she really is a gamer, you better get an extra Xbox and TV, because she isn't going to play any of that split-screen bull****. Signed, The Other Guy. P.S. Please disregard if she really loves Monopoly. This week in geek history. We're sending you back to the future. Yes! Oh my gosh! This week in geek history is brought to you by Five Stones Media. Find them on the net at fivestonesmedia.com. This week in geek history. Yes! Oh my gosh! All right, Brian, get it together in there, man. You know, you, right? you know. I worry every time that you put a segment up, <laughs> and I'm always blown away. Yeah, you do such I, I, a fantastic I, job. I, I just don't want to let you know what I'm doing yet. Yeah. So, all right, uh, we only got about four minutes. Bro. All right, so I'm going to shorten it up. All right, uh, on February 9th, 1979, uh, starring Michael Mack, James Remar, David Patrick Kelly, it's The Warriors. A warrior yes. come out to play. And I watched something recently. That event, the the whole gang meetup, the guy got shot. That really happened. Really? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, I believe that. Yeah, no. But I mean, well, you know, I always wonder about like the costumes. I always thought, I always reminded me of kind of like, I, I don't know. Like like an like an RPG in essence, you know. Yeah. Like, like here's some different NPCs that are dressed completely different from the other group, so you know which yeah. ones to kill. You know, right, that's uh, you know expendable. No, but, NPCs. but Brooklyn was like that back in the day. They had gangs on every freaking corner. I really corner thought it they... was when you're a jet, you're a jet <laughs> to the end. Yeah, they dance and you know no no all no. Right. What's all next? right, <laughs> I got I got uh, another geeky holiday for you to hate. I hate your face. Yes, it's uh, on on February twelfth. Uh, of course, the origin is in eighteen oh nine. 
celebrating the birth of Charles Darwin. It's Darwin Day, a global celebration of science and reason. So, well, when, when, when do they give out the Darwin Awards? That's, that's the only day I care about when the dumbasses die. Yeah, no, you're right. I, I'll have to look at Here's it. Here's a fork. Try not to die. <laughs> What's next? <laughs> What's next? Um, uh, kind of sad note. Um, oh. February 13th, 2000. <laughs> the last original Peanuts comic strip appears in newspapers one day after Charles M. Schultz dies. Wow. Yeah. Why the hell would you pick that? Um, well, because we were know, on a roll. We, hey, let's, let's 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 make everybody sad now. Way to well, bring us down. I yeah. know, I'll All right. Well, I'll bring you up with some birthdays. How about that? Yeah. <coughs> yes. So uh, on the eighth, uh, Seth Days Green. people didn't die. Yeah. Seth Green. <laughs> Seth Green. Ching. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Uh, on the eighth, uh, John Williams, the composer. Oh, hey. All right. Yeah. Star uh, Wars was never the same. Yes. No, on the eleventh, Jennifer the Aniston. Oh my God. On the twelfth, Christina Ricci. Oh, yeah, God. There you go. Oh, uh-huh. Thank you, man. Uh-huh. On the 12th, Michael Ironside, which I saw last weekend in Turbo Kid. That's a crazy <laughs> movie. It, it, in Starship Troopers, the best was like, it sucked out his brain. <laughs> <laughs> it sucked. That's a, the best sci-fi line in history. It sucked out his brain. Yeah. On the 13th, uh, Henry Rollins. And on the 14th, Simon Pegg. Hey, all right. I yeah. hope he doesn't screw up this new Star Trek movie. Yeah, well. Well, he supposedly wrote it. So I, know. I know. We'll find I know. out. We'll find out. All right. Mr. Finley. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming in, man. Oh, no, thank you. Come by anytime you want. Awesome. All right. See, all right, I'm going to come sweep his floors. <laughs> Woo! Going to in exile. All right, we'll, I'll get the address from you later. Guys, so. next week we're going to have uh, Legend of Zelda Sifty tickets to give away, so definitely want to tune in then because uh, we're giving them out on the air. Yes, yes, we are. And, and, we, and follow us on Twitter at Twig Radio. Like us on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash The Week in Geek. We will remind you incessantly. Yes, and we need followers on Spreaker. Too, please. For the love of God, yes. yes. Uh, three people did it. We're I up to know. 60 now. Yeah. Come on, guys. Don't let us down. So, uh, all right. Uh, another great show was in the books. And yeah. uh, I feel like we're missing something. Ah, screw it. All right, guys. So, till next time, keep your nerd flag raised high. GFL. We are Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. 1280 WODT New Orleans, an iHeartRadio station.